All right, AP Chemistry Notes, page 28. So this is the beginning of what's called thermochemistry. So all involving heat. And when we're looking at heat, one thing you wanna constantly be asking yourself is what direction is it moving? Is it moving into the system? Is it moving out of the system? Um, because that will be important. If you have it moving the wrong direction, then it will really mess up your understanding and your calculations. I start out here discussing enthalpy. Enthalpy is a weird concept. And so I have it defined here. I got this just off Wikipedia. I felt their definition was the best one I could find. It says enthalpy is a measure of the total energy of a thermodynamic system. In other words, it's the total heat in the system. It includes internal energy, the energy required, which is the energy required to create the system, and the amount of energy required to make room for it by displacing the environment, and so on. That's all, all the different energies involved, not just the energy from the motion and so on. So it's there are many hidden energies that we don't typically think about. Now, as it mentions here, the total enthalpy cannot be measured directly. Thus, you typically do not see H enthalpy listed. What you see is delta H, the change in enthalpy. And it's been defined as positive for endothermic processes and negative for exothermic processes. And of course, just think endo in, exo out. Uh, you have to be careful when somebody asks you or states whether something is endo or exothermic because anything where heat's moving is both endo and exothermic. You can't have heat go into something unless it's leaving something. So be careful and make sure you're looking at the correct system. So for example, if I had a ice cube in my hand, and I said, is this process endo or exothermic? That, that question has not been phrased clear enough. To my hand, it's exothermic because heat's leaving my hand. To the ice cube, it's endothermic. So if the question is not specific, make sure you ask. If there's nobody to ask, normally it's referring to what's happening in the beaker or the styrofoam cup or the particular reaction. It's normally not referring to you. So whatever you would feel is not the concern. You need to be um, non-egocentric when doing these problems. And like I mentioned, please read this a few times on your own to help you understand what enthalpy is. Moving on. Uh, equation you learn in first year, Q equals MC delta T. I often just call it Q meat because it kind of looks like meat if you squint your eyes or turn the C and the delta into the appropriate letters. The weird thing here is the C. C is what's called specific heat, or sometimes you might see it called specific heat capacity. And very roughly put, that is how well something holds heat. Something that holds heat very well, like water, has a high specific heat. And something that doesn't hold heat very well, like most metals, have a low specific heat. And so, for example, this problem that we're going to look at next, you can see the specific heat of water is about 4. Iron is about 0.4. And what that means is that water is about 10 times better at holding heat. Iron is about 10 times better at moving heat, getting it from one spot to another. So take a look at this problem. 21 gram sample of hot iron was placed in 50 milliliters of 25 degrees Celsius water, so room temperature. The temperature of the water rose to 35, that's no surprise. What was the starting temperature of the iron? Well, this brings up a common scenario that I have drawn out over here. 
we have our iron cooling down from some unknown temperature. And we have our water heating up from 25 to 35. So there's two assumptions you need to make. The first assumption you need to make is that the two things are going to keep changing temperature until they meet in the middle somewhere. In this case, that's 35. So you just assume that the iron completely cooled down to 35. The other thing you assume is however much heat went into the water must have come out of the iron. So in the calculation, you'll see the first thing I do is I use Q equals MC delta T to solve for how much heat went into the water and notice that's a positive value, 2,090 joules. We then assume that heat came from the iron, so the amount of heat that left the iron is negative 2,090 joules. And again, this is where you need to be careful. You need to pay attention to which way is the heat moving, to the water it's moving in, to the iron it's moving out, and so it's negative. Then, once I know how much heat is leaving the iron, we do Q equals MC delta T for the iron this time. We can find the temperature change. It says that it cooled down 223 degrees. And if it ends at 35 and it cooled down to 23, I just add the two together to get 258. You can also use the definition of what delta T is, and that's what I've done right here. I've used the definition of delta T to solve. And you can do it either way and you get the same answer either way. I think the way I did it first is just, just using common sense is easiest. Now I want to point out something you may have noticed that I wrote over here. It's this, Q versus delta H. Q is the quantity of heat. It's just an amount of heat. It's not relative to anything. So in this example, the 2,090 joules, that just happens to be the amount of heat. Delta H is the amount of heat per mole. It's relative to an amount of something. So you can think of delta H as being a bit more sophisticated than Q. All right, thermochemical equations. It sounds fancy. All it means is when you write your reaction, you include the heat. There's two ways to show it. One way would be just write your reaction. So just say A plus B forming C, and then just say off to the side, delta H is whatever. Another way is to put it actually in the equation as if it was a chemical. If it says to put it in the equation, if it's endothermic or positive delta H, make sure you include it on the left side with the reactants. And if it's negative or exothermic, make sure you put it on the right side with the products. So in this particular case, if it happened to have been endothermic, I would have written some amount of heat on the left. So I'm just gonna make something up, let's just say 25 kilojoules of heat, like that. Now, we will review Hess law soon and do some more problems. Um, but the last thing I want to show here is how you can think of the delta H or enthalpy as one of the chemicals and you can do stoichiometry with it. So take this example. It says the delta H is negative 285.8 kilojoules. That means for every one H2 and every one half O2 that react, we get one H2O and we also get 285.8 kilojoules of heat produced. The negative means it's exothermic and it's relative to the balanced reaction. So you can think of the delta H value as just one of the chemicals. <clears throat> 
So in this problem, I set it up like a typical mole problem using fractions. Calculate the amount of heat when 10 grams of oxygen were burned. They say to ignore the hydrogen, it's in excess. So I take my 10 grams of oxygen, convert to moles, old school, and then I can use the balanced reaction with the heat to do stoichiometry. It says for every half O2, I get that much heat produced. And that's what I did here. And notice my answer. Please signify whether it's indoor or exothermic. So because the heat is coming out of the reaction, please write it as negative. You could also say 178.6 kilojoules of heat produced. That'd be fine. I think it's easiest just to put the negative. And let me make sure I'm not forgetting something in here. Or I didn't want to spin the page. That was not what I wanted to do. Oh boy. I wanted just to take a look at the whole page here and see if there's anything that I missed. Um, I did mention over here that usually I prefer to keep delta H out of the equation. I find it easiest just to write it off to the side. I think it's, it's a little bit cleaner and easier to follow. If you put it in, it's easy to lose track of what's going on. So I say keep it out unless there's a reason to put it into the equation. Something that's gonna come up in the next few lessons is when you write the heat, do you write, for example, 25 kilojoules or do you write 25 kilojoules per mole or as the college board likes to do it 25 kilojoules per mole based on the reaction and we'll go through how to tell which is the most appropriate or if it doesn't matter in that case that takes care of page 28